When I found out I was moving to Boston, the first thought that came to my mind was, oh no, the winters. But upon further review, are winters in Boston actually that bad? Is it like living at the North Pole? Or is that just an incorrect stereotype? But first, we express our love for Boston through apparel and other accessories. Check out our Etsy store to see more. Look, I'm from Austin, Texas originally. I had never seen more than a light dusting of snow before in my life. The first time I had to drive in snow was intimidating and disaster was averted on the highway, but that's a different story. I moved here expecting November through April to be nothing but snow and freezing cold temperatures. I read all about nor'easters, which are effectively a cross between a tropical storm or hurricane and a blizzard. This was a bit nerve-wracking at the time, but in my experience so far, and it's only been a few winters, it doesn't feel like winters in Boston are quite that bad. Although, I admit, I might have some recency bias because specifically this past winter, November 2023 through April 2024, was pretty mild compared to other Boston winters on record. Feelings only go so far, however, so let's take a look at some data on Boston winners and how winners in Boston compare against the rest of the country. I'm using data provided by NOAA. The specific data set that I'm using is the 30 year normals from 1991 to 2020. And I'm only comparing Boston against 55 other major metro areas in the US. So what we're looking at here is weather data of 56 major US metro areas, specifically with some metrics more focused around wintry conditions. First, let's look at the number of average snowy days Days per year. A snowy day is classified as the number of days where the amount of snowfall is greater than 0.1 inches. So I'm going to do a bit quick of magic and conditionally format this column to make it a little bit easier to read. So when we sort all of the major US metro areas by the average number of snowy days per year, we can see that there are 12 metro areas who have more snowy days than Boston. This actually doesn't make it seem that bad. I mean, Boston gets around the same amount of snow days as Indianapolis, which is over in the Midwest. But I want to call our attention over to this second column when we start looking at the average snowfall for a year. And now let me go ahead and work a bit of magic and sort this column as well. So we see that when we sort the average snowfall per year, Boston jumps to the metro area with the eighth most amount of snowfall per year, right around the same amount as Minneapolis and Denver and Milwaukee. What's really interesting is that even though Boston had 12 metro areas with more snowy days per year, it jumps up in average snowfall per year. What exactly does this tell us? Well, it tells us that when it snows in Boston, it really does snow and that gets into the whole nor'easter. So that means that while it, we, there aren't nearly as many snowy days as I expected when I moved here, the storms and blizzards and such that we get really bring in a lot more snow. Unlike a city uh, like, let's go ahead and look at Chicago, which has five more snowy days per year than Boston, but averages almost a foot less of snow per year. So when it snows in Boston, it pours. And we can actually see that if we sort by the amount of snowfall per snowy days. Let's work a bit more magic. So when we sort by the amount of snowfall divided by the amount of snowy days per year, we can see that Boston is the metro area with the fourth uh, highest amount of snowfall. So that means that really, again, to drive home my point, when it snows in Boston, it really does snow. And I do want to note that I gave zeros to some places like, for example, Austin, where they hardly get any snow. Technically, that would have put them like up here toward the top uh, uh, and compared them to Boston. So as you can see, while Boston doesn't have quite as many any days of snow as some other metro areas. It really does snow here with nor'easters uh, when the snow comes to the area. What about temperatures? I want to draw our attention now to the column of the average days per year of minimum temperatures below freezing or less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Let's go ahead and format that column. I'm now formatted in sort of this column. Man, I love Excel. What we're looking at here is seeing how many days in Boston where the minimum temperature reached below freezing. And actually to get here, it's kind of surprising. Boston has 18 metro areas who have more days per year where the minimum temperature jumped below freezing. So it really doesn't get terribly cold here uh, when you compare it to other cities. Like for example, Baltimore has averaged one more day per year where temperatures are below freezing. And Baltimore is six hours to the Southwest. Columbus, Cincinnati, Indianapolis over in the Midwest, it gets freezing there far more than it does in Boston. And we start 
start talking about blistering cold days, usually only once per year in Boston does it really get down to like blistering cold, below zero degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Whereas in Minneapolis, this is happening all of the time. So if you hate the cold, really Boston isn't terrible. It's the snow so far that is the impact. But some people who are watching this right now are probably saying to themselves, now wait a minute, I've walked the streets of Boston in winter. It gets really, really cold. This doesn't seem to be telling the whole story. And I do think we need to dive a little deeper because I agree with that assessment. Boston is a wind tunnel. And while I couldn't find uh, a very good data on the real fuel, I do know that when the wind is blowing in the winter time in Boston, it can make it feel a lot colder than this actual temperature. So let's go ahead and format and look at the average annual wind speed in Boston. So now we've sorted by average annual wind speed in miles per hour in Boston. And what do you know? Boston is the windiest city in America, even more than Oklahoma City. There's a whole musical about the wind in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, where the winds blow sweeping down the plains. Well, guess what? Oklahoma City only has the second highest average annual wind speeds from 1991 to 2020. Boston is number one. So while the average days per year where the minimum temperature reaches below 32 degrees Fahrenheit in Boston is less than expected, you're usually going to have to deal with some winds that come along with that. And when you're walking through downtown Boston, especially, I swear, it's almost like a wind tunnel. You have all this wind to begin with and between incredibly large buildings, especially for those who have walked along the Freedom Trail in winter, I mean, you can almost get blown over. It's crazy. And this makes it a lot colder. Again, I couldn't find any data on real fuel. So maybe this would bump Boston up a little bit. Hold on to your hats when you're walking through the streets of Boston. It can be blistering with the wind. So yes, the temperatures potentially aren't the worst. They're bearable on their own. But when we throw the wind into that, Boston, in addition to all of its snow, can get pretty cold. Now, I want to go ahead and draw our attention next to something that is, in my opinion, a positive of living in Boston and something that I actually quite enjoy about the weather here. Let's look at the mean high and the mean low temperatures in Boston, as well as the difference between those. Conditional formatting, go. So it's no surprise that the mean high temperature in Boston throughout the year really isn't that high. It's only 59 degrees. And if we go ahead and sort this column, we see that Boston is really one of the cooler metro areas in the US. And it probably comes as no surprise based on all the discussion that we've had about mean low temperatures so far in Boston during the winter that the mean low temperature in Boston throughout the year really isn't that bad. Similar to the days where it dips below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, there are 18 metro areas in the US where it on average gets colder than Boston or at least the same as Boston. But I want to call our attention now to the difference in mean high and low temperatures. Let's look at that column and see where Boston stacked up. So what does this column tell us? Tell us? The difference in mean high and mean low temperature really gives us an insight into the temperature swings that we see throughout the day in some of these cities. You've probably heard the saying, if you don't like the weather here, just stick around a while because it'll change. I've heard that in every single place that I've lived. In Boston, it's one of the cities that has the most stability in temperature. Look at this. Boston only has a difference of 14 degrees average daily temperature. This means that the weather here is far more predictable. You aren't going to have wild weather swings. I remember growing up in central Texas where it would be 80 degrees on a spring afternoon. It'd be hot. It would be humid. A storm would roll in. A cold front would hit. It would drop down to 50 degrees and then you'd have tornadoes all of a sudden due to the drop in temperature. We see this in places like Denver, Tucson, Sacramento, out in the desert. Obviously, there are some significant temperature shifts across the day. Um, again, Austin, where I'm from, Exhibit A. Um, Boston doesn't have that. It is much more predictable in Boston, and I like that. It's not like in February where we get a surprise week of 70-degree weather, and then it's back to the freezing cold like it was when I was living in Ohio. No, Boston is far more consistent. When it's cold, it's cold, and when it's hot, it's hot. And you get the seasons. They're pretty stable. You get the rare day here and there where things just don't seem right. But for the most part, you don't have wild temperature swings. And I do appreciate that about living here. So to recap, when we look at this table and these data, we see that the winter in Boston actually, you could say, is pretty bad. There's a lot of snowfall. And when the snowfall happens, it's in droves. Maybe not as many days per year as you would normally expect, but still, it happens. And it sticks around because it's cold. However, although the temperatures don't get below freezing as much as you might think, there's the wind factor 
that you do need to account for that makes things much, much colder as you're walking around. But at least it's all predictable and you won't have wild weather changes. The other good news about winter in Boston is that the city has the infrastructure to deal with winters. Unless it's something crazy like a nor'easter where we really need to prep for like power outages, they know how to keep the roads clear and sidewalks clear. Unlike Austin where the entire city shuts down with just the threat of snow, Boston can handle it. Side note, I don't blame cities in the south for not being prepared for snow. It's so rare that there's ever a need to have a ton of snow plows and when it does happen most residents have never driven in snow before so it's easier, safer, and more cost effective to just shut down for the day. So this concludes my overview of winter in Boston. Please let me know in the comments how your experience with winter in Boston has differed or if I missed any important aspects of winter in Boston. Please like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to see similar videos.